thank you very much for purchasing our uh, Vulcan 900 uh, bobber kits. Uh, as you can see, these bikes are not the most attractive in their stock form, so we're really excited to go ahead and convert this bike to a bobber. Uh, they're really nice quality bikes, and they deserve the, a nice quality bobber kit, so you found the right people to do your job for you here. So anyway, uh, let's get started. Uh, the first thing we want to do is uh, point out a couple things you'll need before you get going on this thing. Uh, you'll need the Sawzall or some kind of a cutoff wheel to cut the rear fender supports off. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, go down to the store and buy me a new blade for my Sawzall. But this is about a 5 inch long metal cutting blade. So go ahead and grab you a couple of nice sharp blades before we get started. And then the other thing you want to do is, uh, boy, and believe me, go buy yourself one of these little roll around chairs. Uh, it makes working on these bikes just really a lot of fun. It's just uh, it's so much easier than bending over and stooping over and working on them. So grab, your, grab yourself a, a saw and a, a little ch roll around chair and then we'll get started. Okay, before we get started, uh, go ahead and tie your kickstand up like this. It's a good idea because if you're going to work on this bike with the kickstand down, you want to make sure that as you roll the bike forward, maybe wrenching a nut or something, it won't, uh, it won't roll the bike forward and come the kickstand won't uh, collapse on you. So tie that kickstand up and then we'll get started on the rear fender. Okay, to remove the seat on these Vulcans, uh, you go ahead and put the key in the slot here on the, on the left side cover. And then uh, before you turn that, go ahead and push on the seat. Oh, about right in here. Push down real hard right here as you turn that key, and that should release that seat. There you go. Uh, like I say, you don't want to turn that key too hard, or you might break the key off. So be sure and push down the seat when you turn the key. Okay, to remove the left-hand side cover, all you do is just take this screw uh, right here. This is the one just ahead of this one that holds the battery, the tool kit on. So remove that screw, and then we'll go ahead and just uh, pry the side cover off. It's held by the uh, four little or three little donuts, uh, so you kind of have to pry on it. So we're going to just pop that off there, and there you have it. And then we'll continue on. One quick note, uh, whenever I take something off, I just go ahead and put the screw back in the hole. That way you won't lose the screws. So that's a good habit to get into. To remove the cable latch, uh, go ahead and remove this screw right here. And then uh, release the cable down below so it just flops around there a little bit like that. And then what you want to do is you just pry this... Uh, this little end out here, just pry that, pop that out of there like that with a screwdriver or something. And then you can go ahead and just rotate that over like that and pop the cable out. Do that and we'll be right back. Okay, to uh, remove the cable from down below, you just want to take the screws uh, out of the here. There's one there and one there. I've removed those already by that key, key switch here. So go ahead and remove those. And then you just want to pop that cable out of that little groove in the back there. Just put a screwdriver in there and pop that out. And then that'll allow that to come out like that. And then go ahead and just uh, rotate that around and pop that cable out of that slot. Then you go ahead and uh, pull the cable out and you're uh, ready to proceed. I'm going to put this uh, key uh, lock back on the bike. I think that'll help support that side cover if that's sticking through the hole on the side cover. So go ahead and put the two bolts back in and then the, the latch part of it goes to the rear. Before we take our fender off, we want to disconnect the uh, wire that comes out of the fender here. So if you follow that, it comes out there and just uh, plugs in right there behind the gas tank. So go ahead and unplug that. You just push on that little tab there while you pull that apart like that. And then go ahead and remove these uh, side screws on this uh, chrome strip on this fender here. There's one here and one on the back. Just go remove those and take these side covers off both sides and then we'll be about ready to pull that fender off. Okay, to remove the fender, all we have to do is remove the four bolts. There's two on each side. And then if you remove all four, that fender should just pull right out of there. Watch the wire on the front there. Make sure it doesn't snag on something. And there you have it. Thing looks already, uh, looks great already, doesn't it? Except for these uh, Cadillac tail fins sticking up here. Okay, our next step would be to remove the gas tank. Uh, now, I want to make it real clear that uh, we at Blue Collar Bobbers, we're not certified mechanics or anything like that. So, basically what I'm going to do is just tell you what I read on the uh, Kawasaki forums and then what I uh, get out of the uh, uh, workshop manual. So, if you have any uh, doubts at all about this, just consult an uh, uh, experienced uh, Kawasaki mechanic. So, anyway, 
Uh, what it tells us to do first is to remove these, the bezel here on the gas tank. So to do that, you just take this screw out. And then uh, if you'll notice, this just slides off forward. Now it might be kind of stiff, and uh, so be real careful and kind of pull on the bottom and push forward. It'll be a lot easier for you than it was for me because I, uh, I had to learn from experience here. So anyway, that's what it looks like. If you'll notice these pegs at the front of the uh, gauge here, these pegs right here, that's what the uh, bezel slides on. So go ahead and do that, and then we'll continue on. Okay, here's another view of those pegs that the, uh, the bezel slides on. So that'll kind of give you a good idea what you're looking at there. And then uh, the next step, we go ahead and pull this little boot off the front of the speedometer. Okay, and then this is a connector right here. And there's a little button that you just push. So just go ahead and push that while you're rocking this uh, switch. Just keep rotating and that'll come loose like that. And there you have it. There's a big connector there that comes off. So go ahead and take that off like that. Like I say, there's that little button you push right there. And then, uh, then the other thing you want to do is there's a vent line right here on this. Just go ahead and take the little keeper off that. And then uh, just kind of pull that off. Well, I had to push it off with a uh, screwdriver. And then that pops off just like that. Go ahead and pop that off. And then uh, the forum said there's another another uh, connector there, but I don't see one. So unless they change them on different models, but anyway, that's that's how you disconnect that. Okay, next we want to remove the uh, speedometer from the uh, tank, and that's real simple. This just pries off the back. Just put a screwdriver or something in there, and then very carefully just pry that off. Mine was kind of corroded, but it'll just lift off like that. Be real careful and just pry it off carefully. And then this just. Uh, the bezel itself just slides off, or the uh, speedometer itself just slides off those same pegs that the bezel was on. So you kind of rock that back and forth, and that should pop right off there. So there you have it. Okay, just a quick note on the uh, speedometer here too. Uh, my lens was kind of foggy on the inside, so it's really cool if you uh, take these screws out of the back, just these uh, screws right around the outside here, and then you pop that grommet out. You can go ahead and take this uh, uh, speedometer apart here, take it apart, and you can clean that inside of that lens. So that's kind of a cool little thing there. Just thought I'd throw that in there. Okay, our next step will be to remove the coil cover. Uh, that's just you, this unit on the left side of the bike. Uh, there's a screw right here on the front side. Just go ahead and remove that screw, and then this should just pop right off here. It's just held by three little rubber grommets. So go ahead and pop that off. Okay, and there you have the, uh, the fuel pump connector is right here, right behind this tube here. There's a little tab right here on the top. Just go ahead and put a little teeny screwdriver and lift up on that tab and then you should be able to unplug this connector right here. This is the uh, uh, connector that connects the fuel pump. Let's go ahead and disconnect that and then we'll uh, disconnect the fuel line and we should be able to take the uh, tank off. There again, I got this information from the uh, uh, Kawasaki forums, and it seemed to work out really well. So what you do to disconnect the fuel line is you just uh, put some rags under this area because a little bit of fuel will uh, spill out. And then uh, go ahead and just put a little screwdriver uh, under this little red uh, U-shaped connector that's over this uh, line there. I just kind of very carefully pried that out like that. Let me tip that a little bit for you so you can see it. This one's, I've, like, obviously I've taken it off the line here. But this just kind of pries away from the... Uh, this connector here and then they should be able to just pull that off the fuel line so that's what it looks like on the inside so go ahead and pop that off make sure there's no fuel spilling out and then we'll uh, remove the fuel tank okay this is the right side of the motorcycle this is the air cleaner uh, go ahead and remove this vent line right here okay go ahead and remove these two bolts in the back of the tank here and then uh, you may want to slide the tank back just slightly because there's one connector here that's kind of a stubborn little rascal it's right here and that one also has to be disconnected, so go ahead and uh, disconnect that. You just push this little button on the top and pull it out. It's kind of stubborn, but if you pull and push real hard, it'll come apart. Okay, let's go ahead and remove the tank. Uh, all you do is just slide it back just slightly. And then kind of gently lift it off. Make sure there's nothing snagging or anything on there as you pull it off. You don't want to tear a wire or something, so that's basically it. Okay, the next step we want to remove this uh, whole plastic tray here. So just remove this screw and the one on the other side. And then that whole thing should lift out of there. 
The last item that we want to remove is the uh, right side cover. This is the right side of the bike. Uh, it's the same as the left side cover. Just remove that screw down in here and then it'll just pop right off on those uh, little rubber grommets there. So I'll do that. And then the other item you want to take off probably is your front fender. Now this is the classic model. So uh, we're not going to have the fender painted on this one because it's too ugly. We're going to use our own fender on this one. But if you, got a, if you do the custom model, the custom fender looks good with the kit. So anyway, the way you take it off, just remove these four screws, this one. And then there's two on each side. Just pop those off. And then uh, I think you can send everything to paint. And then we'll uh, continue on and get this kit done while everything's been painted. Let's get this bad boy finished up.